Welcome to the Mr. Skin Podcast, your weekly dose of what's new and what's nude in movies, TV, and Hollywood's sexiest stars. Now get ready for your host, the world's foremost authority on celebrity nudity, Mr. Skin. The legendary Mr. Skin. Dude, Mr. Skin. Mr. Skin.com. Skin, everybody. Coast to coast from Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York, it's the Mr. Skin Podcast with your hosts, Mr. Skin and Andrea Lowell. We want to hear from you. Call the show and leave us a voicemail at 484-SKIN-POD. Find all things Mr. Skin Podcast online at MrSkinPodcast.com. Hey everyone, welcome to the Mr. Skin Podcast, sponsored by Playboy.tv, the best in adult entertainment, pants down. We all <laughs> we all love Playboy models, and we all love to binge watch, and Playboy.tv gives you both with more than 80 totally exclusive shows like Badass, Foursome, and Swing. So happy to announce we are on episode 63 of the podcast. Hey Skin, how are you? Doing good. Only six away from episode 69. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> I can't wait to see what you have in store for us for episode 69. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now I got to start working. Thanks for putting pressure on me. <laughs> oh, man. Time is flying, though. We're like just whipping through these, and each week is just more and more fun and more and more nudity. It's like it never ends. Well, you know, it's funny. My head of content got married last week, so he was out of town. <laughs> And I realized how much I rely on him. You know, we have a content department, but I have mm-hmm. one guy that works here, Joey, that is in charge of all of the people. And he's he's very in tune with, you know, his full-time job is to follow all these shows and movies and breaking news. And he reports <laughs> it to me and we go over it. I mean, this yeah. stuff, uh, we call him the Sultan of Sex, but he uh, <laughs> he's great. But the, the guy goes and gets married and goes on his honeymoon last week. I was lost. I was like, you know, I had to, I had to do extra digging that, uh, <laughs> y- you know, to look into stuff I'm not used to looking at. I'm usually just like, hey, is this, is this show on Wednesdays or Thursdays and he'd know right away then I have to go look at that you know because the problem is with this stuff you you TiVo it yeah you, don't, you have no idea what nights I mean other than Sunday nights the other nights are, are really uh really hard ain't so. that the truth but yeah. did it when, yeah. with him with the Sultan gone um did it kind of take you back to the good old days where you were doing like all the digging and the researching <laughs> yeah no it's fun because you know it's even like okay what's going on in the scene like I know the nude scenes that's right. not the problem yes. the problem is what is the context of this? Is this his wife or girlfriend? Yeah. You know, what's going on? Why I, are they boning? I, I, I yeah. always meet with him before I do the show just to say, yeah, I just want to make sure I think this is the guy's wife. And, he, you know, I have not But last week, uh, without him around, I realized how much uh, uh, the Sultan of Sex uh, means to me, <laughs> Joey, and the head of my content department. So, oh. uh, yeah, it was like uh, um, having someone like that's a big help. Trust me. And quite frankly, it's the whole company. I mean, there's if, if I didn't have eight people going through all these movies and TV shows, um, we wouldn't find this stuff. I mean, it's it's work and I'm not complaining about the work, but no. it's, uh, it's definitely work to find all. This, but so. it is true that no one has the walking encyclopedia of nude knowledge that you do, Mr. Skin. Like, you oh, no. are but one the of thing a kind. Is, <laughs> no, I know the nude scenes, but I don't know, like, what night the show's on, you know? Totally. I don't know and if could you that's imagine the guy's you girlfriend did? or his wife. I have, you know, but I mean, this is this is stuff I need help on. It's like, if you had to know all that, or if you did know that, like, you wouldn't have any room left in your brain to, like, no, function. No, you can't, you can't have 28,000 actresses nude scenes in your head and know uh you know and know if they were uh you know a maid or a you know like what was their role in the show you know those things aren't that important absolutely so, yeah. oh man yeah. that's so much so what do we got going on today episode 63 well one of the things i wanted to talk about was the toronto film festival and andrew i've talked to you through the years many times mm-hmm. and you know one of the things i really enjoy is i, I send some skin scouts to these uh, certain, not every single uh, film fest, but the big ones. And one of them is Toronto in September. And I have guys out there that they usually, the way this works is there's all these movie review guys that work for online movie uh, review websites mm-hmm. that don't pay them squat. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of them, quite frankly, you know, might still live at their mom's house, but they're, <laughs> or, or, you know, are struggling because, you know, these uh, internet uh, movie review sites, they don't pay a lot of money, but um, what I do, and I've been doing this now, gosh, at least 12 years or so, where 
I, I have a network of guys that when they go to these shows, I help them out by maybe paying for their flight or paying for their room or nice. whatever. And all I ask is when they watch their movies for their movie review sites and not get paid any money, <laughs> that they report back to me with the exact times and the information on, on these film fest movies of the nude scenes so that um, we kind of have the skinfo before it happens. And it's I mean, been a it's great fantastic. partnership. Yeah, yeah it's been it a great partnership. Genius. So. I actually, for today's show, I went through all the Film Fest stuff and just kind of cherry picked the ones that you would know or the listeners would know. I didn't want to get too obscure. You can right. come to our website to get really obscure. But for the show, I kind of went with the big name uh, actresses and the ones you guys would know to talk about. Because what's fun about the Skin Scout work is the fact that these are movies that haven't come out yet uh, commercially. So it's kind of like, what can we expect in the future It's at the... Uh, some of these movies to see maybe either in late 2017 or um uh you know into 2018 so very similar to our fun bag forecasting uh mm -hmm. when when i do uh movies and tv but this is specific uh for the toronto film fest and i have some really cool stuff so let me start with actually this is a movie that came out last weekend uh, nationally but it was uh our guys saw it uh, the first week of the toronto film fest okay and it's worth talking about. It's called Mother. Mm. Uh, it's a Darren Aronofsky uh, horror flick starring Jennifer Lawrence and Javier Bardem. Now, it's it's out in limited release. I'm hearing great things about it critically. Like, people, that, and, and I will say, wildly split opinions, though. Really? Because people that I really, there's certain guys on the net or friends that are movie guys that I f follow on Facebook or whatever that usually when they say they like a movie, I'll probably like it. Okay, but some people absolutely hate this, but then others are. This is the greatest movie ever, and loved it. And first of all, Aronofsky did Requiem for a Dream. That's the uh, movie I with love Jennifer Connelly. That movie, yeah, yeah, and that ended with the double dildo scene. Ass at the, to at ass, the ass to ass, ass baby. To ass. <laughs> uh, he also did the Wrestler with Marissa Tomei. Love it. He did Black Swan <laughs> with the Mila Kunis, Natalie Portman, Lesbo. So, dude, great. When, you, when, it, when he does a flick, there's a good chance you're going to see some hot chicks naked. And mm -hmm. uh, this is no exception. Uh, Jennifer uh, Lawrence, who, by the way, in Passengers, a couple uh, last out time, she did show a little butt, but it was like side butt. And it was nice. It was, you know, her new debut, so to speak. But this is her first, our first look at her boobs. Ooh. And yes. um, yeah, hey, she's about as big an A-lister as you could get. And we've never seen her breasts in a movie. And at the hour and 48 minute mark, there's a pretty crazy scene. I won't ruin it for anyone, but you do see uh, her topless. So my guys at the um, at the Toronto Film Festival loved it. And they were pointing out to me, uh, hey, skin, her breasts are bigger than you think. And I was like, oh, OK, I can't wait to see these. And um, uh, anyway, you could see it. It is in theaters. It's one of the. They actually played this like a week before it came out, but I still, it, it you know, it's topical, obviously. So Jennifer Lawrence nude boob debut uh, debut in Mother, great, uh, and from apparently the Toronto Film the word, Fest, and it's out. The word on the street says she has big boobs. That's oh yeah, bigger okay, than good. you think. Okay, bigger great. than you think. Yes. Exciting. So that's <laughs> this is very exciting news. So uh, so that was at the Film Fest. Now um, these other movies I'm going to talk about, to my knowledge, are not out. Uh, but uh, you never know. Sometimes they get released like just in New York City. But from what I know, none of these have been out yet. So here was one that caught my eye. I wanted to share with you uh, from the Toronto Film Fest. It's called My Days of Mercy. Okay. And um, it's about uh, the daughter of a man on death row. And she falls in love with a, a woman on the opposing side of her political cause for uh, her father here. And it stars Ellen Page and Kate Mara. And... Um, what is really good about this is it is Ellen Page and Kate Mara. Right? <laughs> Lesbo action, yes. So, Ooh. Um, yeah, and Ellen Page, uh, she did that movie Into the Forest a year or so ago uh, where she had a really great topless scene, so we were um, really excited about that. And that was that's the best place to see her nude, but I think people are going to love this. Uh, I think about an hour and three minutes in, they told me, uh, there's a scene where they're having sex and it's really, really hot. And and Kate Mara um, is 
well, and I should mention, if you don't know who Ellen Page is, she's the girl from Juno. Right. So that's probably what most people would know her from. Yeah. Um, Kate Mara, I know, was on House of Cards, mm-hmm. if you remember, you know, the Kevin Spacey show. And she did some stuff on there, but it was always a body double. Mm. Um, it wasn't her in the nude scenes from there. So this is her new debut in My Days of Mercy. And uh, it's cool because it's it's like tit to tit, Ellen Page and Kate Mara. <laughs> lying in bed at the hour and three minute mark so great yeah really good stuff and like i always say i say it on the podcast i say it on the radio whatever when an actress makes her nude debut that's always most exciting so uh my days of mercy kate mara uh nude debut and ellen page another nude scene excellent uh, and hot girl girl action so we're all excited about that sounds like a (laughs) win-win yeah win-win um hold on had to take a sip of water. I was so uh, All good. excited and breathless. <laughs> um, now, this one is fascinating, and I'm dying to see this. I haven't seen the nude scene, but I have confirmation it happened. All right. It's um, a movie called Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> this doesn't sound like a major theatrical release by any means, but right. it stars. it's about um, a romance between a young actor played by Jamie Bell and a Hollywood leading lady icon played by Annette Benning. Okay. Now, he is 31 years old. She is 59 years I old. I was going to say, she's definitely no spring chicken, uh, but no. 59, okay. So they have an affair uh, in this movie, mm. and at the 45 minute mark, Annette Benning is topless <gasps> at 59 years old. What? And I am dying to see this. Yes. The last time she was naked was 1990s gr- <gasps> The Grifters with John Cusack. That was what? 27 years ago. That's yes. Crazy. That's crazy. I know. Oh my gosh. I know. I would love to know what inspired her to unleash her boobs upon us, you know, s- with such a big gap in between. Um, right. Happy for it, though, but that's awesome. Yeah, it's weird because I, I remember like when Diane Keaton got naked uh, at 57 uh, years old. That was kind of cool. She had been naked earlier, but then you're like, wow, and she still looked good. So I have to say, I have not seen the scene yet because it's only played that I know of at the Toronto Film Fest. But um, it's confirmation she's nude. I'm excited to see this. I I, I, I mean, I would think Annette Bening's breasts would still look good, but we will have to wait till it well, comes we're gonna have to, to theaters out. and to... Uh, uh, DVD to find out, but the movie's called Film Stars Don't Die in Liverpool and 59-year-old Annette Benning topless at the 45-minute mark. Excellent. So. I can definitely say I probably will never see that movie, but thank God for MrSkin.com. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I chances are right we'll, just, we'll just go look at the 45-minute mark on the website. But, um, <laughs> anyway, there's another movie that really going nuts. I had to triple check this because there's something that happens in this film that we're going to have to talk about because okay. I, I think I know where you stand on this, but I, I'm dying to hear your thoughts. So okay. the movie's called Disobedience. I already and like it. It's about, yeah, it's about a girl from an Orthodox Jewish home and her affair with another girl. Okay. Now, okay, this is an example of why um, when I don't have my uh, content guy uh, here that These are little things I'm not 100% sure of, but I'm guessing the two stars in the movie are Rachel McAdams and Rachel Weisz. Yes, yes. Yes, so we all know Rachel McAdams. Rachel Weisz, you should know. um, She's been in so much stuff. The Mummy with Brendan Fraser, Mm -hmm. Constant Gardner. Yeah, they're both, uh, or Rachel Weisz is a uh, UK actress. Um, And Rachel McAdams, we all know too. I think she's from Canada, by the way. But uh, anyway, she's become a big star too. So. In this movie, uh, now I'm guessing that Rachel Weisz is the Orthodox Jewish girl because she's Jewish in real life, but I could be wrong, but I'm I'm pretty confident. I would assume that as well, just based on her aesthetic and just her heritage, yeah. So first of all, I want to say that Rachel McAdams uh, shows breasts and butt in this, which is awesome. This will be her fifth movie uh, she's been naked in, and uh, I remember when she was a nobody before she was the you know the notebook and all that she did a movie called my name is tonino in the first couple of minutes and she went skinny dipping and i love those before they were famous nude scenes Mm -hmm. because that was fun that we had that at the website and then she became a star so there was that but uh so rachel mcadams is naked in it but here's the thing and i'm just gonna read what my guys sent to me okay and um you then will just then you and i will discuss this so at the hour and five minute mark so they Obviously, they're in a relationship in this thing. It's Rachel McAdams and Rachel Weisz. 
at the hour and five minute mark, well, they start in an alley and then they take it in to the hotel room. Um, McAdams goes down on Weiss's right boob, though it is covered by her mouth. So she's got Weiss's boob in her mouth. Okay. Weiss, uh, Rachel Weiss, rips the crotch out of McAdams' McAdams outfit to go down on her. What? Okay, now this is, I know, it's fantastic. Okay. Um, so, uh, both have their hands down each other's panties and are seen rubbing. What? Lo- Listen, it's, I'm not there yet. Oh. Lots of tongue kissing. Weiss then spits in the McAdams mouth ah! three times. What? Yes. McAdams moans as Weiss goes down on her. Uh, Vice goes down on her. No real skin in this scene, but still pretty amazing. So they're going at it in the alley. They take it inside. I have never seen, like, I've seen this on porno tube and, and stuff, but she spits in her mouth three times. Like, you know how, like, the old. Uh, you know, where a girl spit on a guy's cock or whatever. And I've yeah. seen the spitting in the mouth. It's it, I've never in my life had that stuff go on. But what's your opinion about the spitting in the mouth uh, scene, guy or girl? Um, you I know, don't see you there. I don't see you there. No. Here's the thing. No. The whole reason spitting is hot because it, it looks like jizz. Right. Yeah, so yeah. if a girl's spitting on a wiener or it's in porn, like obviously it's hot because it looks like, you know, spooge. But yeah. I don't really want if, if I'm making out with someone, I love your spit in my mouth, but I don't want to be spit in or on. It's just a little okay. weird. So I think because yeah. it is such like a popular porno thing right now, that's maybe why the director chose to throw this in. Just kind of like the dirtiness, the rawness, a little bit of degradation. Um, I'm sure it is hot when we watch it but i'm not into that at all yeah and you know what i had to double check because i was like are you sure she spits in her mouth like spits in her mouth he goes yeah three times this happened the guy that was at the film fest. So, like, did she swallow yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did she swallow right but but the fact that it's it's you know rachel uh, rachel That's vice nasty. and rachel McKenzie, they're not like anonymous nobody's doing no. a spit lesbo scene so that's pretty hot stuff i gotta say i'm uh it's hot but uh, it's like as an actress like you actually actually have to get another actress's spit in your mouth i wonder what yeah. like the prep went for that like yeah i know we're gonna have to ask that she spit the spit right you know that's funny yeah so anyway the Crazy. name of the movie is disobedience we have rachel mcadams breasts and butt we have hot a lot of hot and by the way there's tons of them making out and this but this scene at the hour and four minute mark starting in the alley oh, yeah but, decency police out there yeah it's even like uh, aside from the spitting though like the fact that look, they're doing like mutual masturbation it, like to each other is so like manual stimulation oh, yeah. i should say yes so yes, yes, yes. so 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 hot uh yep. crazy crazy yeah so i don't know if this is the best lesbian scene of the year because i haven't seen it like i I trust my guys that go, but until I physically see it, I can't say, you know, like they may get a little more excited or a little less excited than I would. So I need to officially see this to, to, to rule on it. But mm-hmm. I'm really intrigued by this, uh, Rachel McAdam, Rachel Vice stuff. So, oh, yes. Oh, me yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, uh, yeah, that movie's disobedient. So, a couple other things, real quick on Toronto, uh, The Shape of Water, uh, is a movie. There's a lot of guys that are webs that come to our website that are, fans of Sally Hawkins. She's a British actress. Um, in her earlier days, she looked more like a hippie girl in a lot of her uh, movies. Um, but anyway, she has a ton of nudity in this, including her full frontal debut. Um, and like I said, she's a British actress. I don't even know what it is I would point you to that would you'd be like, oh yeah, that's Sally mm-hmm. Hawkins. But trust me, a lot of guys are into her. Um, also, Lauren Lee Smith is in this movie. And... Um, she is a girl that used to be on the L Word, uh, did an amazing uh, movie for nudity called Lie With Me in 05. Mm-hmm. And um, we at Mr. Skin, big fans of both these actresses. So both do a ton of nudity. Sally Hawkins, full frontal debut. Mm. Sa- this is the fourth time Sally Hawkins is naked. And Lauren Lee Smith, uh, this will be the ninth time wow. uh, movie she's been naked in her TV show. So uh, great stuff. It's called Shape of Water. It's an adventure fantasy set in 1962. Um, well, that sounds good. That, yeah, that's good. And then to, to a couple other quick things. Uh, the Killing of a Sacred Deer. I might have mentioned this to yeah, you. Yeah, we've talked about this a couple times. The, yeah, the Fun Bag Forecast. But mm-hmm. Nicole Kidman, her 19th movie. Damn. She's naked. But what intrigued me about this at the nine-minute mark, Colin Farrell pulls down her panties and uh, appears to be a shaved bush, mm. which uh, I'm very intrigued and need to see that. 
Um, and then I guess later in the movie, uh, he he references that she doesn't have pubes anymore. And I don't know the again. I ha- haven't seen the movie. I don't know. Uh, but it is supposed to be a horror movie. Pretty cool. And uh, um, I think at the hour and thirty four minute mark, we see Nicole Kidman completely naked again with the shaved bush. So um, it's uh, it's her nineteenth movie. Nineteenth movie. Uh, Nicole Kidman's naked and called this the killing of a sacred deer at the Toronto Film Festival. Uh, last but not least, from Toronto, I think this is my last one I wanted to talk about. Okay. Um, yeah, last but not least is the butterfly tree. Um, Melissa George is naked in this um, breast, and she's an Australian actress. She was on Alias, The Good Wife. Um, She's been nude before Dark City in 1998 with uh, Rufus Sewell watching her as a awesome nude scene. But um, good to see her back uh, doing nudity again. Um, God, that Dark City was 1998, so oh, almost wow. 20 years ago uh, when she did that. But lots of good uh, Melissa George nudity. It's called The Butterfly Tree. I don't even know what the hell it's about, but I don't <laughs> know if that's important. But um, anyway, she's naked like three or four times. And uh, a lot of guys, like I said, at our website are uh, Melissa George fan. So cool. uh, that, yeah. So a lot of cool stuff. And, and most of that other than mother, uh, we'll be seeing in the coming, uh, in the coming weeks and months. And, uh, when it comes out, I'll probably be showing that to you, Andrea, but it's always fun to know in advance about some of these cool nude scenes. Absolutely. And I had a question quickly about Nicole Kidman. Um, now every time she's done any frontal nudity where we do see her, you know, down under Reddish. region, Reddish. she's never been shaved, right? Right. So this, and, okay. and I don't know. It's without seeing it. I don't know if they did like CGI. Right. Or if they, I don't know. I got to see. I don't know if they put a, uh, a Pussy patch. patch. Who, who knows? <laughs> yeah. But she does. Yeah. She does prove she's a uh, red uh, redhead in the times uh, she's gone okay. naked. Billy Billy Bathgate for one um, is one you want to see. That's going way back. That's like a 1991 movie. But um, yeah, when she's shown Bush, it's. Um, it's been red, so cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you call a redhead's bush when it's shaved? I don't know. So I don't a, know. A deadhead? A deadhead? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, hey, one last thing. Um, I didn't get to this uh, in the last couple updates, but a movie came out called Tulip Fever, and um, I know we we got some uh, people hitting us up through our customer service about this. It's a. Uh, I think it came out September first, so. You know, almost three weeks ago, but uh, Alicia Vikander, our, f- our friend from the Danish girl mm-hmm. and Ex Machina, mm. great nudity, and one that um, a girl that made her nude debut is this uh, Cara Delavigne, Vi- De Cara Delavigne, who's a fashion model. Uh, she's like five nine, gorgeous UK actress model who uh, shows breasts in this movie Tulip Fever, and mm. uh, it's out in theaters now. Um, and I, I forgot to talk about it, but those are two uh, uh, big name actresses that uh, I know guys are really into. So absolutely, uh, it's called Tulip, Fe- uh, Tulip Fever, Alicia Vikander, and uh, uh, Cara Delevingne. Delevi- I don't even know. How Whatever, to it, so. she's beautiful yeah. though. Yeah. Like watching her, yeah. that, I mean, she's very, very pretty. Yeah. Nice yeah. little tulip too. fevers yeah. like tulips on your organ. There's so much good nudity in that. So yes, yes, <laughs> that good, huh? Oh yeah, that's pretty really, damn really good. good. <laughs> yeah. So um. But anyway, Andrew, before we move on, uh, why don't you tell us more about our great sponsor, the Mr. Skin Podcast? Oh, absolutely. So adult entertainment definitely got an upgrade when Playboy.tv was invented. Think Netflix, but for really hot women and uh, of I'm plenty of really hot women and shows about <laughs> sex and so much more. You know, I was thinking because it's for women and men and like both yes. at the same time. As yes, 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 yes. Slip. But the thing about it is there's no waiting, which means you can binge on as many shows as you for as long as you like with hot shows tailored to. Here's what I was talking about. Solo viewing or couples viewing. Yes. And there's more than 80 totally exclusive Playboy shows like Night Calls, Seven Lives Exposed, plus endless behind the scenes content that you really can't see anywhere else. And, you know, I was there earlier today. I'm even on there um, yep. along with more than 150 other models, playmates and TV personalities that you're definitely going to love. So right now, Mr. Skin listeners can join Playboy.tv for just one dollar. So go over there now to Playboy.tv before this absolutely incredible deal is gone that's playboy.tv right in your browser get it all going one dollar and you can see andrea naked what's better than that 
Go to playboy.tv. <laughs> <Nothing. laughs> yes, totally. Totally go. <laughs> yeah, go. No, but thanks a lot, uh, playboy.tv uh, for sponsoring uh, the Mr. Skin podcast. So I wanted to talk uh, television nudity, Andrea, because mm-hmm. there was a ton of good stuff, as there always is on Sunday night. And I want to start by saying, without question, the best show for nudity right now is the deuce on hbo Mm -hmm. only two episodes their first two episodes has had more great stuff than most shows will have in a whole season and um it's from david simon that did the wire we've talked about it we're you know super jacked up about it and it's sunday night they've only done uh two episodes and it's about the uh new york city during the 70s and 80s when porn and prostitution were rampant and we're, we're just so uh hopeful that this doesn't go vinyl on us and and be off the air after one season because it's starting off so great and it's it's right now they're dealing like in the early 70s about the hookers and porn in Times square area um so we expected a lot of nudity but they're also coming through big time so last yeah this night, is looking t- ridiculous you got a lot to go through <laughs> oh my god so there was an incredible scene from last night that i got to get to in a second but um so First of all, um, the second episode, there was like, I think, four girls naked, but the four four that I'll talk about. But the big one, um, first of all, this Jamie Newman is fully nude. And I have a question for you, and I want you to look at the picture of Jamie Newman. Mm -hmm. Is um, the uh, so she's full frontal and she takes a picture or she's like doing pictures of herself so that she can. I guess like be in the back of a, uh, yeah, she's like it's a just prostitution some pictures catalog so or something. Pass them out to potential clients. I mean, right. this is the early seventies is before the internet. You had to take pictures, right? Yeah. So I'm saying no Merc in there. What I you think that's a Merkin. Oh, really? Yeah. See, I, I was saying no Merkin. I think they're getting better. I think the Merkin technology is getting better. They're making them look more sparse, but it just, you know, as, as a woman who has pubes, that's just not how it looks. And I so you're, seen, you're thinking she's murked up? Yeah, okay. it just because it doesn't fade out. You know, it, a real puss, a real pussy bush. <laughs> it, you know, and probably yeah. male too. You know, it trickles out. It's like thick in some spots, and it gets more sparse. This is just kind of like all or nothing. With but this one specifically looks real because it is less dense than the crazy ones we have seen previously. Well, that's what that's what has been tricking me. And I gotta right. say, I've I've said this many times. The hardest thing for me now, it's not CGI nudity, it's not body doubles, it's, you know, it, it, it's it's this damn Merkin. It's like sometimes it's I killing think, us, that's, man. that's real, it's it's tough, I don't feel, I don't have the confidence with a Merkin, uh, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. I don't have the confidence to, to say 100%, I'm always like asking opinions, I find myself asking people at the office, do you think that's a Merkin? So or, here's how I know? think they're doing it. I think very much like they make very high-end wigs. It's like a piece of mesh or a piece of nylon that, you know, the Merkin artist puts the hairs on. Um, so when you put it down, that but sparse look case, looks real. The sparsity of it, there's like sparse spots on it. Yeah. You know? So what I'm saying Which is I think me... there's not li- nylon underneath that that's skin colored. Oh, okay. I know. You think that's what's going on? Yeah, because okay. I've I've worn hair pieces and things before. Obviously, not Merkins, um, but I just kind of know how they, they. I know the magic that they're able to do. So because yeah, they're doing a hell of a job, man. I know it's crazy. I mean, I would love for it to be real, but when I first saw this, I was like, that that's a really nice Merkin. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's a so, hell of a it's a hell of a great scene. Hell yeah, and it is. Like, this, forget this the, is the girls. Yeah, yeah. We we got a Merkin technology is just getting crazy. So we got to uh, we got to tone it back. I mean, I on one hand, I love that it it's real because to me the fantasy is the old bushes from the old days. But right. Then again, I'm like I feel cheated in that. Well, that's almost like she's wearing a fur kini. So you know, I'm I'm very conflicted. Andrew. I know, I know I'm to conflicted yeah. too. But we can say the quality of Jamie Newman's full frontal scene is pretty damn good because it's long lasting. There's oh, good lighting. And great boobies. She's playful. Great boobies. Like yeah. she's getting in all these different poses because she's actually posing for pictures. So the quality of the nude scene, Merkin or not, is top notch, a plus. And even the fact that the Merkin is better, that the fact we're talking about it so in depth, two thumbs up. 
Yeah, it's a, it's a great scene. And this is her, her new debut on our website. She's cool. not a famous actress or anyone. But the other girls from last night... Um, that I love is uh, one is uh, Emily Mead who she shares a sex scene with her pimp and um, they're in bed together and you would I don't know if you remember this but there was a movie called Nerve last year where I think it came out in 17 or in 6 well it came out in 16 but I can't remember if we had it for the anatomy which year we had it uh, for the anatomy awards but she was a cheerleader mm-hmm. and she did a butt flash with oh her, that's and I'm right a big fan. yeah she was the same girl um her, it was the same girl so we've been big fans of her she was on like she's been on the leftovers boardwalk empire but that nerve cheerleading thing was awesome this is her fifth time she's been naked from uh the deuce last night but um that was another great nude scene a great brush shot of emily mead she's really hot but i love her cheerleader thing from nerve from uh last year yeah but totally. anyway then to, last but not least um this maggie gyllenhaal and Alyssa kapinski <laughs> this is crazy stuff <laughs> okay give it to me you got to see this. So, all right. Um, they're they're making a porno movie now. This is the <laughs> early seventies. I'm watching and, it. Oh my god! I know. Okay, good. Oh okay. Jesus! So they're having sex with Vikings. So Maggie oh Gyllenhaal and Alyssa Kopinski, they got these blonde wigs on. They're and this guy's got this crappy camera, and it's like terrible effects. And uh, these Vikings come in all full frontal dudes with Viking helmets on, and the girls like. Are sitting up big. Maggie Gyllenhaal is a prostitute on the show. She's making a little extra money, and and Viking actually, believe it or not, was a popular porno thing in the old loops in the early nineteen seventies. But uh, I digress. But anyway, so he's filming like Viking porn, right? Right. So these guys um, come in and they start jerking off in front of Maggie Gyllenhaal and the other girl. They then they had this girl next to the guys that is out of camera range starts squirting cream of potato soup right out of a Campbell's soup can <laughs> and it's like so the girls get out of like a plaster with, gun or something right no, no, what I'm is th- that yeah like out of a plaster gun right but it's she's sucking it out of the cream of potato soup can so funny and splashing it all over the girls and it's cold it's a, just a crazy scene I've never seen anything like this and it's just um, the, this is what I'm saying. The deuce is just awesome. This and, is nasty. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. this is just so it's it's so entertaining on so many levels. You have the you know you have the money shots, whether it be potato soup or not. But the the <laughs> stupid ass Viking outfits. I mean the the male actor with his dong just hanging out like that. It's yeah, and there's fucking some yeah, crazy. big packages there. Yeah, it's cr- it's just a wild. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think I'll ever have, eat cream of potato soup again after no! I see this scene. Well, yeah, I, I yeah. actually might uh, go pick some up some. <laughs> 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 salted or unsalted yeah um Extra but it's salty baby <laughs> it's just crazy so you got the and they actually found guys that like look like hairy 70s guys like you know like you know what i'm saying like skinny hairy 70s guys no yeah. merkin for sure that's like <laughs> yeah it's just wild but this is fucking you know great, when I, it was funny i was doing radio this morning yeah and when i woke up my guys had already put the pictures up but i didn't have an explanation so I went on the radio and oh I was like, God. wow, look at the, I was talking to the radio guys about like, look at the jizz on her shoulder and stuff. I didn't know it was cream of potato soup and they show it in the thing that she was actually coming right out of the can. So it's pretty funny. It's, but anyway. This is fucking epic. And I, I really yeah. hope you're right, Skin. I hope this is not like a vinyl type of sensation where it goes away. I hope the deuce is here to stay like, oh my Lord, please. <laughs> this is just, <laughs> um, just, even though I haven't watched the show, just like the, the happiness I'm getting from just watching these nude scenes oh amazing yeah and people i know people really like this show so far but like i said i i'm i don't want to get too attached to it and it does a vinyl on us and it goes yeah. away but anyway uh that was the deuce last night two episodes in cool. two fantastic uh episodes of nudity and uh the, the the only time i've seen cream of potato soup in a in a nude scene so pretty cool right um <laughs> yeah um okay so there's an, uh, another couple things television wise i wanted to get to okay. uh Outlander on the Stars Network. Um, it's in its third season. Uh, it stars Katrina Balfe. I've talked to you about mm-hmm. this uh, uh, this show a few times. She's somehow it's it's a weird prem. It sounds weird, but they they're able to pull it off. It's um about Katrina Balfe is a nurse and she's mysteriously swept back in time from 1945 to 1743. 
don't ask me why they chose those like <laughs> that she's from 1945 and gets swept back to ni- 1743 but whatever it's um a, ni- a nice show on the stars network and last night uh uh jenny frazier uh laura donnelly is breastfeeding and she she pulled out her right breast uh katrina balf star of the show uh trying to make her marriage work with jack um uh, she wakes him up in the middle of the night for a quick, he climbs on top of him, is topless. But then uh, um, the other one that people were really into, a, a Doctor Who fans, uh, uh, last night this Emma Campbell Jones uh, showed some right breasts. And I only bring it up because a lot of guys, she's on the show Doctor Who, mm. and it's her new debut. So wow. uh, anyway, yeah, Outlander last night on the Stars Network, uh, some nice nudity from three different actresses. Uh, uh, Laura Donnelly, Katrina Balf, and um, Emma Campbell Jones. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, that was last night. Um, your show, Ray Donnelly. Oh. Real. Wheel of Skin. Yes. Oh boy. Wheel of Skin. Uh, this is where CP, the EP, pulls out a uh, an actress off the Wheel of Skin for me to talk about. Excellent. So we're going to do that. I, of course, am Pat... Uh, Say jack off, you are veg white, and this is a uh, a Merkin. What do we say? What do we say? Griffith, a a Merkin Griffin production. Griffin. Merkin's big, yeah. Merkin Griffin production. Uh, oh my god, Merkin is big in today's show, but totally big. anyway. All right, yeah. So CP's gonna pull up an actress uh, out of the blue, and I'll give you a little scoop on her. Go ahead, CP. All right. And we've got January Jones. Ooh, Ooh Andrew, yes. you know January Jones, correct? Absolutely. I yeah. love her classic beauty. Give give yeah, it to me, baby. She is gorgeous. Well, let me start by saying January Jones was on my favorite um, television show, one of my favorite television shows of all time, uh, Mad Men on AMC. That right. was on from 07 to 15. And uh, she played Betty Draper uh, half the show, and then she was with that, uh, other guy, uh, Betty, she was Betty Francis, uh, uh, also, uh, when she remarried, but, mm-hmm. um, man, she is so gorgeous Just beautiful. and, um, yeah, she, you know, here's the thing. Uh, she's only, uh, oh yeah. I should mention that after Mad Men ended, uh, that show, uh, last man on earth, she's been on that. So I think she went directly from Mad Men to last man on earth. So she's been working steady on television f- since for 10 years That's great. and, uh, is doing great, but nudity she's done uh two mo- two movies you could see her naked one is brief and one is awesome and the one the brief one before she hit it big on mad men a couple years before she did a movie called three Bur- three burials of Mel- melcatus estrada and um about 37 minutes in she's in a truck with this these guys i think there's um god there must be three people or three or four people sitting in the truck and she's wearing, they're all wearing like cowboy hats and stuff. And she, her shirt opened up and we could see, you could see her left breast for like a flash of a second. And for about five years or no, for about six, seven years, that was like the extent of January Jones nudity at our website. We were kind of bummed that it was cool to find, but it was like it. Mm-hmm. Then she did this Western called Sweetwater in 2013. Oh, that's right. And yeah. And, um, it really was a shock because she um she is topless and she goes to to bathe in the creek and these two bad guy uh bad guys on horses um you know sneak up and she's got her back to him and she swings around and and fires a gun at one of the guys and the other guy escapes but she's topless and it was just kind of weird because it was a kind of a nothing movie you know like it wasn't you know, it was like she just did this. She was on at the time. She was on Mad Men and did this kind of low budget western. And next thing you know, she's topless. And it's a really nice. It's quick, but um, a really cool uh, nude scene. So you can see her Mad Mams, uh, January Jones uh, in <laughs> Sweetwater at the hour and nine minute Excellent. mark from 2013. And um, that's a great question from uh, CP the EP because uh, I'm a big January Jones fan and. Um, uh, she has done nudity. It's Excellent, a great, question. great. Yeah, but is that? Yeah. But that's the, it. The wheel of skin. That's it. Okay, but good to know. We got a full. You get a. You know, we finally got. It's like when, 
when uh, Halle Berry was in Swordfish. Oh my god, that's yeah, a, that's a quick scene, super but quick. It's so fantastic because yeah. you get a full, clear, great shot of her breast. Well, same with Sweetwater for January Jones. So. We'll take it, even if that, yeah, that's all we ever get. We'll take it because just like you I'll said, take like, it the like Hall- a man. Yeah, the Halle Berry yeah. thing. Swordfish was what fifteen years ago. I don't know. I can still see it right now in my mind's eye as clearly and yeah. as vividly as I saw it on the big screen. So a hundred percent. Yep. So anyway, so great wheel of skin, uh, wheel of skin question from CP uh, January Jones. So happy to give the rundown on her. So anyway, I was getting finishing the TV stuff from yeah. uh, last night, but there was a. This is one. Um, maybe while I'm talking, CP could look up the, when this show airs. It's called Better Things. It's on FX, and um, it aired. Let's see. I think it airs on. If I'm not mistaken, it airs on. Thursdays, I think. Okay. Um, but it's by Louis C.K. and Pamela Adlin, produced by. It's an FX show, and um, Pamela Adlin, you might, you probably know her from either uh, Louis. You might know her for. You might know her from. She was Runkle's wife in Californication, which I love. Oh yes, totally. Yeah. yeah. Okay. She's got I'm that like, like I, raspy voice. Yeah, I knew I knew her, but I didn't know from where. So that's what it is, Californication for sure. Yeah, and she's also the voice of Bobby Hill on King of the Hill. So cool. Sorry, I keep having to get drinks of water, but anyway, it's all good. Um, You're a human being, yeah, man. So <laughs> in this uh, um, better things, she she's playing a version of herself. And like I said, it was produced by Louis C.K., but the season two FX uh, first episode, she's on the toilet Mm -hmm. and uh, she gets up and we see butt from Pamela Adlon, which is pretty cool because she doesn't show a lot of skin. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was kind of a just kind of a wasn't expecting it type of nudes thing. So uh, better things on FX from Thursday night, Pamela Adlin nude. Very cool. And uh, usually when we see partial butt, it's usually the top part. So it's really weird that we ever see kind of like the lower butt from a female. So it's a pretty special scene. Yeah. So she wasn't, she wasn't like wearing a thong or anything. I mean, she's definitely no, she's wearing a her butt. shirt and her butt's hanging out, like really hanging yeah. out. She's bending over. It's what I'm saying. Yeah. The shot from the bottom up on the, on the butt like that is not, we usually see it from the top down. Exactly, and uh, that's why I said it kind of caught my eye when I was mm-hmm. going through all the stuff that happened for the week. But um, if you want to see her breasts, and she has, a, she actually has really nice boobs. Uh, she did a movie called Eat Your Heart Out in 1997. About cool. eight minutes in, um, you see her; uh, she's drying off, and uh, you see her right breast. So anyway, it's a second nude scene. Uh, you know, uh, well, I shouldn't say that. In Louis, we saw a little butt crack here, but this is her second good nude scene from Pamela Adlin. So cool. And that's and think about that. That's twenty years between nude scenes. Wow. That's pretty wild. Wow, right now. excellent. It's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, and then um, uh, uh, do we talk Ray Donovan? Yeah, we said did did we? Get, we didn't did get I skip into Ray it. Donovan? The wheel of skin oh, okay. jumped in, but you can tell I'm me sorry, about I started it. Started to talk Ray Donovan. Yeah, real quick that uh, uh, Lily Simmons. So hot. Um, yeah, her and Liv Schreiber uh, had some sex. We got some side butt um, there. It was kind of a more of a sexy scene than nudity, but Lily Simmons, we're tracking heavily here mm. at MrSkin.com. We know her from Banshee and a couple of, she was on True Detective. We're big, big Lily Simmons fans here and they had a, a sexy, um, uh, Little sexy rendezvous. sex scene. Yeah. yeah. Last night, uh, season five, episode six of Ray Donovan. And then, Last but not least. Yeah, you got to talk to me about this because I've been looking at this uh, little gif or gif or whatever the hell this is uh, for quite some time now because I just can't stop wondering (laughs) what's going on here. So lay it on me, skin. Well, this is it's there's so much stuff out there. That's I'm going to preface it by saying this there. I was actually I was hitting up one of my guys today and say, explain where the hell you guys found this, because uh, there's a show called Virgin which is from B- Black Pills Network. And you're okay. like, what the hell is yeah. that? But it's, um, it. it's like a French, from what I understand, it's like a French-Israeli-U.S. joint project. <laughs> okay. And what they do, I know, it's crazy. And Random. they put out, I don't even know, I'm not even 100% sure how they're finding it. And you can, um, you can, first of all, if you live in the U.S., you can only watch this on your phone. That's how obscure this is. Oh, all right. Um, <laughs> but it's, they, they do a season of 10 episodes of the show Virgin, of which all 10 of the episodes are like 10 minutes long. And you watch it on your phone. 
I'm like, how did you guys find this? So it's called the show's called Virgin. Okay. Uh, they're in their first season, four episodes in. Well, they find uh, from what I understand, it's like um, it's it's like this weird French VOD, but they're not French people, so I don't know what's going on. But anyway, <laughs> check out. I, I I don't even know how to explain this other than this exists. We have it at the website, and if you want to see probably the best breasts I've seen in 2017 from an actress I had never heard of. We didn't. There's really nothing on her. Um, this is her new debut. Her name's Georgina Leeming. I mean, and she's <laughs> yeah. Andrew, just describe those real she looks, huge, oh incredible boobs. They're yeah. like torpedo titties. Okay, yeah. it's like Jane Mansfield today, but bigger. I'm like, this is total like pinup girl, uh, glamour model, glamour yeah. a list actress body from like the old school Hollywood era. These big, swooping, large, just jutting out. I mean, they're just they're they're wide, they're long, they're round, they're everything. Um, they're, they're fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's like her name's Georgina. We should call her Gorgina because. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, they're huge. They're natural. She's beautiful. They're swingers. So they got a yeah, lot they're, of bounce. They're everything. They're everything. And, it's like, and I don't even know. I know that these guys. This. Uh, this Black Pills also did this show called Exposed, which is the same thing. It's the same exact kind of format. And that had a ton of great nudity. So, I, I mean, it's like, at what point is it, like, TV stuff I should be reporting on or just stuff that some guy's <laughs> making in his basement for his friends you know, that I'm reporting on? You know, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. If, I don't if know. it's this <laughs> level of titty, like, report on it. Yeah. <laughs> no one's going to be upset. No one's going to be upset <laughs> that we discovered this. And if if there's any takeaway from today's show, please come to MrSkin.com and check out Georgina Leeming, L-E-E-M-I-N-J, or M-I-N-G. G, 100%. Yes. For the best boobs I've seen in two. They're like Fucking up there with an Alexandra Daddario level boob. Like I think they good. may they're be fantastic. better just because they're yeah, not they're, as big, but yeah. the, the shape, it, it, like I'm telling you, it takes me back to a different era, but not yeah. really because she's not pale like you know what i mean she has that same kind of like almost like a marilyn monroe body type but bigger boobs yeah it's awesome. crazy so anyway the show's called virgin we have it at mrskin.com the girl's name georgina leeming and uh i highly recommend you check out these incredible natural boobs so, <laughs> uh, anyway yeah i i, I'm I know it's not it. I'm i know this it. is an hbo or showtime but i i I think this is important for you and our listeners to see this. Hey, um, last but not least, um, we do have a caller. Oh, yay! That I wanted to get to because I this we were talking about this last week, and um, uh, CP, play this call because I think this is pretty funny. Hey, Mr. Skin, this is Ron calling from the Southern California. Just finished listening to your latest Mr. Skin podcast, and I noticed that you were. Kind of trying to figure out what that patch is called that the ladies put on that kind of cover their pussies. And I came up with one here. I'm more than welcome to use it. How about a snatch patch? I love right. it. Snatch patch. Anyway, that was for you. Take care. Have a great day. Oh, I'm going to steal that. Snatch I'm going to steal that. I, you snatch know, how patch. did we not think of that? <laughs> I know. I'm embarrassed. But we will because uh, could you guys remember what we were talking about when we were discussing a patch on the vagina? I can't remember what it was well, we were that talking, triggered that conversation. Okay. What's the lady's name from House that has her own show on Bravo? Uh, it was something she did. She had a nipple patch. And then we started talking about nipple patches and pussy patches. Elisa Edelstein? We were, Oh, Lisa Edelstein. Am I, I okay? I but how be, did it get into pussy patches? What you know? Because that's just how our conversations go, skin. Oh, because she oh, had the nipple I know, patch. Because she had the nipple patch, mm -hmm. and then we said, if you would have a vagina patch, what is it? Okay, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> yeah, it was Lisa Edelstein with the nip patch, and then we said, what do you what do you call it? We'll have to come up with something. Snatch and this patch. Uh, listener came up with a snatch patch, which I love. And if I could find one in 2017, which I think I. Uh, I think I will. We could put that in the Anatomy Awards. Totally. That's a great one. Best Snatch Patch. Yeah, so if uh, anyone else has a question or a comment that they'd like Mr. Skin to respond to or answer on the show, leave us a voicemail with your question or comment, and CP will pick the best ones to play on the air each week with Mr. Skin's response. It's 484-SKIN-POD. I love those voicemails. They make my day. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love them, too. I love, yeah, I, I love it because that's like one of those things like we, um, I... 
when someone comes up with a cool name like that, give the guy credit. He said we could use it, but I will find a good snatch patch to put uh, uh, for us to talk about <laughs> at, the, at the podcast. I will find one. That is I am, so on, fun. I am in the hunt. You are on the hunt, on the prowl, <laughs> yeah. on the yeah. just look, keeping an eye out for the snatch patch. Well, episode yeah. six. What did I say? In the hunt? I don't did I even say know. Looking for a snatch patch? <laughs> I am in the hunt. We're just so okay. excited right now that we have a new name for it. Uh, but yeah. episode 63 was killer yet again. I. It's funny but that we figured out that the real bane of your existence skin is these damn Merkins. They're yeah, getting they're so me. real looking. It's so crazy. They're killing me. Also, yeah, I don't know I, what to do. Yeah, Jennifer Lawrence may be an A-lister, but she's definitely not an A-cup. So we're, I'm getting so no. excited that we're actually going to see them in all their glory mother. in Mother. And finally, Georgina Lemming's boobs are everything. <laughs> uh, That's all you need I to know. know. Everything. Yep. <laughs> Just come check them out. Come check them out. Oh, that was so much fun. So we'll be back next week with episode 64. Thanks, everyone. This concludes another skin titillating episode of the Mr. Skin Podcast. Subscribe to the Mr. Skin Podcast in iTunes and never miss a show. Thanks for listening.